Matt Reif. Stand-up comedian Matt Reif. What do you know about Matt Reif? What do you really know about Matt Reif? Other than, of course, that he's a total babe. A dream boat. I'm the best piece of ass in three states. I'm sure many of you will have seen a number of videos about Matt Reif recently, or including interviews with Matt Reif. He's been doing the rounds on all of the podcasts, discussing his recent cancellation at the hands of the woke mob. Yeah, that old chestnut. Yeah. Well, you may have convinced the gay lords over at Daily Wire, but that shit don't fly on the Daniel Boland show, Matt Reif. Oh, I'm going to expose you. Fucking knob. I'm going to expose Matt Reif in ways that you will not believe. I hope you're ready for the ride of a lifetime. The Reif of a lifetime? Forget everything you ever knew about Matt Reif. And if you already knew the stuff that yeah, I'm telling you, just, to, you know, enjoy me agreeing with you. That's just as enjoyable. Okay, so we're going to start right at the very beginning here. What got Matt Reif cancelled? What was it? It was this joke we're about to look at now from his Netflix stand-up special from a month ago, from November of this year, 2023. His Netflix stand-up special, Natural Selection. Uh, the second Matt Reif Netflix stand-up special of 2023, after he released another one called Red Flags in June of this year. So I guess you could say not so special Matt Reif's specials, you know, if he's releasing two in the same calendar year. But that's neither here nor there. Let's take a look at the joke. I've only been to Baltimore one time. I ate lunch there and the hostess who like seats you at the restaurant had a black eye. <laughs> a full black eye. And it wasn't like, what happened? Yeah, it was pretty obvious what happened. And we couldn't get over the fact that we we're like, this is the face of the company? Like this is... This is who you have greeting people? And my boy who I was with was like, yeah, I feel bad for her, man. I feel like they should you know, put her in the kitchen or something where nobody, <laughs> where nobody has to see her face, you know? And I was like, yeah, but I feel like if she could cook, she wouldn't have that black eye. So... <laughs> Just testing the water, seeing if y'all are gonna be fun or not. Just wanted to see. Just wanted to see. <laughs> I figure if we start the show with domestic violence, the rest of the show should be, should be pretty smooth sailing after that. Now, when I heard that people didn't like that joke and they wanted to cancel Matt Reif, I was like, yeah, me too. Is there somewhere I can sign a petition or something? Because he's such a cringe hack, right? It's a modern twist on an old joke. And then I realized that the reason people wanted to cancel Matt Reif is because he's too edgy. Oh, that's too controversial. We don't make jokes about domestic abuse. I quickly realized, oh, I see. Uh, another collective I don't belong to. People are offended by domestic abuse jokes. No, no, don't confuse. I'm getting uh, all hot and flustered here. Do not get me confused with one of those phagocytes. So let's be absolutely clear, at this point, my only problem with Matt Reif was that I didn't find his jokes particularly funny, okay? Which does bother me a little bit with these professional stand-up comedians with all their Netflix specials. They're working on these specials for three years, going to different clubs all over Austin, Texas, and Nashville, and places like that, all the comedy cities, doing several sets a night, practicing their lines for three years, and going on all of the podcasts with their comedian buddies, and pretend pretending to have spontaneous conversations, which they're not. They're just practicing their lines. And yet three years later, uh, after all the practice, and $15 million handed to them by Netflix to massively, professionally produce their special uh, I'm, I'm still not laughing. But there you go. That's, you know, again, not the main issue here. I actually was a little bit sympathetic to Matt Reif because I liked his initial response to this controversy. Uh, he posted on Instagram on his story. He said, if you've been offended by anything that I've uh, said... There you can see him there, very buff looking photo of him. Uh, he says, uh, he says, tap here to solve your issue. And it was a link and look where the link leads you. It's to a site that sells special needs helmets 
Very funny. I'm on board with that. However, the alarm bells, or should I say the red flags, really started ringing. Looks like the cows have come home to roost. When I saw uh, Matt Reif go on the Jordan Peterson show, what's it called? The, the, the Belly of the Wheel podcast, I think is what he calls it. It's a modern twist on an old joke, you know what I mean? It, yeah. was, it was a real circumstance that happened, an exaggerated yeah. instance that really happened, and I went, you know, this is, this is a classic joke, why not give my own personal modern twist on it and move on? The joke's like a minute yeah, and 30 yeah. seconds yeah, yeah. and people were like, all he did was bash women. And I purposely did it first in the show to go, hey, just so you know, this is, this is the kind of humor I like to tell. And if it's not for you, you are so more than welcome to turn off the TV right now. Now, if you're not getting wild American Psycho vibes already, you soon will be. Right, so I've been, I've been planning this opening, which I don't usually do, because I like to do things spontaneously, but, but I, ha I have to get this one right. Okay, so you gotta help me get this straight. Okay. Okay, so now you're a comedian and you got canceled for a domestic assault <laughs> joke. Joke, and then in response to that, instead of apologizing like a good boy, you put up a joke ad site about special needs helmets to protect the people who are offended by you. And now, to get yourself out of trouble, you're going to come on my podcast. <laughs> I never That's said your that. Plan, I eh? was hoping it would make things way worse. I'm hoping yeah. we can drive sales to that very real website about the helmets. First things first, we really, we need to define what people mean when they say cancel. Because um, if you go over to Netflix, you'll see that Matt Reif is there. He's uh, special is still up on Netflix, uh, right next to all of the other cancelled comedians, you know, like Dave Chappelle, Ricky Gervais. Can you see them all there? All the cancelled comedians together. Call me mental, but the term cancelled, to me at least, means that uh, events that uh, were due to take place at some point in the future have been called off. In the case of Matt Reif, it would be he's got a load of comedy shows uh, all booked up, and the venues have called him like, Matt, we, we can't we can't take you, you, you're too hot to handle right now, we're getting death threats, we can't right? All the events are calling him off, all the venues, and they're saying, no, no Matt, no, it's, it's over, you're, you're gone, you made a joke about a woman with a black eye, no, that can't uh, nothing like that is happening to Matt Rife. What has happened to Matt Rife is he has very, very intentionally and manipulatively uh, realized that he is appealing to a certain demographic, right? His entire audience is made up of liberal women, and they're not good enough for him. He wants to nudge his way in on the, uh, the podcast comedian scene uh, who appeal to disaffected, slightly below average intelligence young men. The kind of people who think Andrew Schultz is the funniest guy in the world. That group of people is very lucrative. I understand why he wants to do it, but making out he's being cancelled and then going on all of the podcasts that he wants to appeal to, starting with Jordan Peterson. Matt Reif has not been cancelled. Matt Reif has realised that people are stupid and that he can pull the wool over their eyes. He is a psychopath. And you must believe me, I'm not even scratching the surface here. We're going to take a look at a little bit more of the Jordan Peterson conversation, but uh, that that's nothing compared to what I'm going to show you later. When this blew up around you, why did you decide to take the strategy that you took? Why weren't you, like, racked with guilt and apologetic and... Because... It's just comedy. Yes, it is. I'm just doing what's funny to me. It's never any deeper than that, nor should it be for anybody. I'm saying things that my imagination drums up that makes me happy, release endorphins in my head that makes my life happier, and all I do is share those thoughts with other people in hopes that it makes their life easier. Yeah, okay, shut up, you psycho. Uh, there's no way your brain just drums up ideas and I, it gives me great endorphins and I just want to share that. Fuck that! I know what it's like making YouTube videos. I have to think for a few minutes, I have to do several takes a lot of the time uh, to, to, to get my ideas out in a succinct enough way so that people will understand it. Can you fucking imagine being a stand-up comedian working on the same fake anecdotes and shitty lowest common denominator jokes for six years, honing them, wetting them down to the 
most perfect, uh, most broadly appealing, uh, uh, meaningless thing. It, it, can you imagine? You wouldn't even know what you're saying by the end of that process. When it comes to the to the moment where the cameras are on you and you have to perform like a fucking seal, the same thing you've been doing on your mate's podcast for the last half a decade, uh, practicing on all of your friends, going to these shitty clubs, four sets a night, six days a week. You would get on that stage and just be thinking, okay, let's go through it. Let's. Th there is nothing that... And you have to look as though you're enjoying it. Like, you, this is the first time you've ever told these jokes. It has to look spontaneous. You have to look happy about it. The dissonance that must be in their heads, unless they're extremely well-adjusted people, uh, keeping that public persona and your real uh, self separate must be pretty fucking difficult you know they're doing all these podcasts they're doing all these sets they're doing two specials in one year i i don't see how they 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 maintain their sanity and that's why they're all depressed and uh, anxious and on adderall how broad scale do you think this rebellion against what you said actually is? How many people do you think are behind it? And why do you think it's become such a big deal? It's probably a few dozen thousand, which sounds like a lot until you remember there's 8 billion people in the world. Yeah, but the rest of the 8 billion haven't got your back, Matt. They're not your fans. But anyway, that's not the point. Uh, I don't think... First of all, that several dozen thousand people are uh, actually making a big deal out of this. Perhaps there are that many people who were offended by his very light joke. I, I really doubt that. Um, but yeah, I don't really get what his point is about the being 8 billion. It's like if I, I don't know, if I got attacked by a gang of youths, knife-wielding youths stabbed me. And uh, and I said, well, <laughs> there was only five of them. What about the uh, eight billion people in the world who didn't stab me up today? Yeah, and I would say 90% of the small majority that is upset with me doesn't go to comedy shows anyway or wouldn't vibe with me as a person anyways. Never have I, nor will I ever, vibe which is fine. Right, That's they're the... probably not that funny. I watched a couple of them today on YouTube. Well, Dr. Peterson, you might want to reserve judgment until after you've seen the Daniel Boland takedown of Matt Reif. Who's Daniel Boland? I can imagine. You know, oh my God, yeah, I mean, they're the sort of people that you just want to, what do you want for them? You want for them, you want them to spend eternity in a hell composed of nothing <laughs> but people like them talking to them. Oh, so good. Twitter. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, exactly right, that. Right, right. But that's the thing is, it's like whether whether you enjoy what I do or not, you don't even have to know it exists. If I'm your problem, if you and I are face to face, and you have a problem with my comedy that I tell that I admit to the world, right? If you just remove yourself from me, if you do something as simple as just turn around, there is an entire planet behind you for you to go explore and live the rest of your life. You don't ever have to think about me. You don't have to talk about me. I don't like. Screamo heavy metal music. Mm -hmm. Guess how often I think about it or talk about it? Mm -hmm. Zero percent of the time. Mm -hmm. You just remove yourself from the situation. I don't. I see no harm in trying to make people laugh as a general um, intention. So Matt Rife's point seems to be that if you don't like his comedy, if it offends you or whatever, just look away because you know. Okay, you're not one of his eight billion fans and well wishes. Um, so just you go and do you somewhere else. He's a very chilled out, relaxed kind of guy, right? Matt Rife is being slammed online after beefing with a six-year-old on social media. Oh. TikToker Bunny Hidea posted this video of her son, who is known by her followers as being very into astronomy, correcting Rife about a reference he made to Jupiter having rings, when the planet most known for having rings is Saturn. Now I know what you're all thinking, a mother posting a video of her six-year-old child to TikTok in a rebuttal to a stand-up comedian's joke. What a time to be alive. Nothing to do with the stars, man. Just because Jupiter has a ring and you don't, doesn't mean- Probably it's Saturn that has the rings, and it has more also, and you're mean to girls. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, was it the mother who had the decency to blur the images of her six-year-old on TikTok? No. 
that was me. What a time to be alive. Ripe then allegedly took to the comments to write, Jupiter also has a ring. Oh, and Santa isn't real. Your mom buys you presents with the money she makes on OnlyFans. Good luck. What a time to be alive. I get it. The mother is as much to blame there as uh, Matt, uh, if not more so, uh, of course. But um, yeah, I, I think his response is a, a bit odd, to say the least. Anyway, uh, that's not the only time he's gone a bit mental on some random person on Twitter or TikTok. I'm waiting to fight somebody at a venue. I can't fucking wait. Okay. <laughs> Cannot fucking <laughs> you, wait, dude. You, you gotta let that go, dude. I'm, I know, I know that's me being 27 yeah, and egotistical, yeah, but yeah. it's just like, I, no. I can't stay. I threatened to f somebody's grandma one time. For talking I shit? I DM'd her. For, because she said some shit to you? The grandson said some shit to me. What'd he say? I was in Chicago. It was summer of 2021, and he just started going in on, you know, typical shit. You're not funny, not funny, not funny, yeah, all this yeah. kind of shit. And I, I had time. Yeah, which is yeah. a huge misconception, by the way. When pe people people's instinctual re uh, rebuttal on the internet is go, "Oh, you, you have all this time to respond to people." Yeah, man. Yeah, I woke up at four p.m. Didn't yeah. have to work till eight. Yeah. I have so much time. I have time, right? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> we start to go back and forth, and he's saying all this all this mean shit. So I go to his profile, obviously, which is what you do. Yeah. When you have an online beef, you go, yeah. I got to find some ammo. So, yeah, yeah. And he had posted a picture with his grandma. And I was in Chicago. And yeah. he also happened to be in Chicago. So I DM'd his grandma like the nastiest, <laughs> freakiest shit I could think of, like trying to smash. Like yeah. I was like, I'm, you know, I'm going to come in your IV, like the nastiest shit I could think of. Yeah. Like deliver some deep dick pizza, whatever yeah. Chicago puns I could think of. Sure. And he was fucking living. Yeah, dude. yeah. He was like, I'm going to fucking find you. I'm going to fly to one of your shows. And I was like, cool, I'll buy you cool. two tickets, one for you. You and your yeah. grandma just come through, dude. Yeah, his grandma never it's... answered it, but I was like, I wanted his family to know yeah. that he, like they they raised they a fucking get pussy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now this video's getting kind of long, and I haven't managed to get into the most incredible thing I found out about Matt Reif. Uh, I think he's an incredibly deceitful, manipulative person. Um, but hopefully, in this video, you've got the vibe, right? He, <laughs> he's not the kind of guy I'd vibe with. Not that I've ever vibed with anyone. Um, he, yeah, I, I'm going to have to leave that for another video. Um, as I say, hopefully you can see that it's kind of an American psycho or uh, uh, he's uh, very thin skinned, doesn't like anyone to take the piss out of him, wants to control the narrative, doesn't like his fans. He wants new fans. He wants the Andrew Schultz fans, right? I'm onto something here. The next video is going to be amazing. You'll love it. If you don't know already, you, you, you're going to be, uh, well, you're going to have your minds blown. All right. I'll see you in the next one. You're fucking awful, dude. Kill yourself. Right, right, what right, are you right, doing right. out here? You're making my life miserable.